and the course of the debate, you know, it's been a lively one, and uh, certain words have gone back and forth that we had thought were part of the sad history of, 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 in our country in terms of the civil rights movement, but um, all who participated in their free expression should not be painted with the same brush of those who have resorted to such unacceptable language and acts of vandalism. However, we must remove all doubt in anyone's mind that those expressions and those acts of vandalism and those threats uh, of, of, of more have no place in the civil debate uh, in our country. From its origins, our country has had a lively debate. You know the history. It's interesting to read it, again, in light of, of what is happening now, but it is also important uh, for us to be able to Again, express ourselves freely, not to diminish that in any way. That's the strength of our country. But also to set a standard that says that uh, some of the actions that took place surrounding this and continue, uh, again, must be rejected. That would be pleased to take any questions. Yes, ma'am. No, sorry. Madam Speaker, I, you had referenced some of the incidents that were happening um, yes. with regard to members who voted for this bill. I'm wondering if you could give us an update on the status of things, and what is your sense of how coordinated they are? Well, I think that you really have to talk to the Sergeant at Arms and the uh, uh, Capitol Police because they are keeping a, a, a list of what has been reported to them, and they're following up on it. But it's just as with anything else, it's important for us to be able to quantify what it is so that we can see what is a threat, what is a, a uh, just an idle comment. But again, not to paint everyone who was part of the free expression that happened here with the same brush of, of some, and I think many people want to disassociate themselves with this, and that's what we as leaders in Congress might do. Yes, sir, I'll come back. Uh, yes. Some months ago, when you talked, there were some threats and things made against the president. Uh, you commented about what happened in your city uh, with Harvey Milk and others, and some some very serious, tragic events that unfolded there. When you hear this type of talk, you coming from San Francisco and the the unfortunate history that happened there, I mean, did you, do you start to think about this? Does it worry you? I mean, in your heart of hearts, what do you think about? When you well, I, I believe that words have power. They weigh a ton. And they are received differently by people and uh, depending on their, shall we say, emotional state. And we have to take responsibility for words uh, that are said that we do not reject. That we do not reject. But part of, I don't want this to be a distraction for why we are here. We are here to pass health care for all Americans, to make, again, honor the vows of our founders in that respect honor also the vows of our founders for us to have free expression, uh, but also to say we are a democracy and that, and that elections, are a way for, elections are a way for us to show our pleasure or displeasure with a particular point of view. Dana? Just to follow up on that, if I may, some of your colleagues have suggested that some of the threats and the vandalism is being stoked by Republican lawmakers. Do you think that that might be true or do you think that that's overstating the role of, of what some Republicans have said or even done, I'm not sure if you've seen, well, out on the balcony of the Capitol. I, I think that, uh, again, I, 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 I don't subscribe to the fact that these acts of violence sprang from any words of my colleagues. But I do think that this Congress and this House of Representatives is a classroom and that, that uh, it, it's inappropriate for members of Congress to stand up and cheer when these sentiments are expressed in the gallery. That's different from saying that it, it provoked it. But I think we have, to be, we have to manage this issue very carefully, recognizing we are a democracy. We don't want to stifle debate or free expression of it. But to understand our leadership role, responsibility that we have to be an example in how we express our differences and understand the impact that our words have on others. And the best way we can do that is to very clearly state that this is inappropriate, that n words would be used that are so um, beneath the dignity of this debate and certainly beneath the dignity of the people they were used against, that actions are taken that are so unsavory and in some ways uh, menacing. But our members are undaunted. They are proud of their vote. They understand what it's about, and, and, uh, and so they're ready to go from here, from there. 
but again, so that the world will know and the Congress has no, uh, the, the country has no doubt, it's very important that across the board we all uh, reject what has been said in the course of this debate, however it was provoked. Yes. Yes.